Okay, apparently we're live. <clears throat> okay, so I think I'm in the shot. I'm going to be the camera person. But hello, everyone. Welcome to the Irish American Heritage Museum, live from the Capital District Irish American Association up on Ontario Street. And we thank them very much for the use of their kitchen. This is a very busy week for the hall up here too, because of course they've got um, parade day. We're doing virtual parade this week. And so they'll have corned bright beef, corned beef sandwiches, sandwiches on, uh, Saturday. on Saturday available to buy. So I have with me Harold and Pat. I'm going to try and keep the camera as steady as possible by leaving it where it is uh, for most of this. This is our first time doing a Facebook Live on our brand new iPad, which I don't really know how to work. So we're hoping everything goes well. Um, but I think I will focus in on the breads uh, as we progress and so that you can see the techniques. So Harold is going to start with brown bread. And then we're going to have Pat make sewed bread with the family style, as we normally call it in our um, Maureen Farrell McCarthy competition, because it's not the traditional four ingredient bread. And then we'll come back to Harold and he'll do the traditional four ingredients soda bread. So welcome everyone. We have the recipe, uh, which I'll film and we'll put that later up on Facebook for you and on our website. So if you don't have a pencil and paper, that's okay. We'll, we'll provide you with the recipes later on. But we're delighted you're joining us, and um, I think food is a perfect way to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So I'm going to turn it over to the two boys. Thanks very much. So I can start. You can start. Mm -hmm. Well, the, um, the, 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 the bread I'm making is uh, referred to as uh, brown bread, and there's, there's a, uh, sometimes there's confusion as to brown bread, that soda bread with some uh, whole wheat in it. Mm -hmm. But this is this recipe is from uh, uh, Bally Malou, uh, Darina Allen's, and uh, uh, what's in here is uh, oat bran, whole uh, wheat bran, mm -hmm. and um, whole wheat. And of course, uh, I get this uh, extra coarse um, flour mm -hmm. uh, from the counties of Ireland uh, on at 73 Third Street in Troy. And this is the uh, cream, which is um, all purpose for us, okay? Right. So this, I know that we have the recipe, mm -hmm. and you can get the recipe. And uh, so this is, this has yeast in it. Okay. And it's very dense, as you, know, you see oh, this. The this is one that's up uh, that I made at home. And we'll be cutting into that later to taste it. <laughs> and we'll, we'll t taste it later. And I, you can make it with uh, any kind of liquid, uh, water, milk, uh, I prefer to make it with apple cider, mm. and uh, when no one's looking, mm -hmm. I use uh, Magner's uh, Irish hard cider, mm -hmm. uh, which makes it taste very, very good. So let me put this together for you to to see. This is um, uh, this is the Irish brown bread. It uh, it happened in Ireland probably after World War II, and it's become. Very, very popular. I know uh, traveling to Ireland uh, uh, four or five times in the past 20 years, mm -hmm. I've eaten brown bread all, all the time. Mm -hmm. So let's okay. get started. So let's get started. Okay. So what I have here is uh, some treacle, or as we call it uh, here in the States, molasses. Molasses. And there are three tablespoons of, of butter. Mm. And here is the... Uh, 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 apple cider and this is a the reason why I use it because it, it is a tip of the hat mm -hmm. to the incredible apple orchards that are in Ireland mm -hmm. and so Especially few people really are aware of that mm -hmm. uh, they export incredible uh, tons of apples every year mm -hmm. so I use I love to use this and can so, I say how do you heated that was that just because it happened in the fridge and you didn't want it cold What's that? The apple cider. You heated it a tiny bit? I heat it because yeah. this is yeast. Oh, okay. This is yeast, and mm -hmm. yeast needs warm. Okay. And it's, um, uh, so here we go. So here we go. Okay. So the molasses and butter, or treacle and butter first. Delicious. So this is a kind of a fancy bread, I should say. Like, Harold is right, we eat brown bread a lot in Ireland. Any of you who've traveled, this is the bread you, typically you would get in a restaurant with, you know, your chowder or your soup or in a bread basket at a restaurant. We yep. very rarely have soda bread with raisins in that situation, you know. Um, 
but th this is like you could technically make the four ingredients soda bread with brown flour instead of white flour and just keep it super simple now but, but according to my recipe one. it is a combination yeah of the whole wheat flour okay and, and the, the cream flour okay yeah now what's what's really wonderful about uh, ireland's uh, whole wheat flour mm -hmm. it has the it has everything okay they don't take it's not just endosperm, which is the white flour, right, it's but the it has the bread and, yeah. and it has the germ. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite a, a gritty sort of yes. texture. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you'd like, okay, yeah. um, sprinkle out a bit. <laughs> or can, I, I can look in the bag. You can look in so there. You can, oh, where am I you can see the bran. Yeah. So you see, there's kind of bigger chunks and flakes. You see, the, all it, the brown yeah. is the bran. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it, it's not that perfectly milled flour. But it gives it a nice bite. Now it, at this time, I take my spatula. Mm -hmm. Well, spatula, it's a good looking one. And as you can see, it's starting to come together. Mm -hmm. So Harold, um, because it's one of you and Pat, both have different kind of methodologies too to the making of this bread. Am I right in saying both of them should kind of be touched as little as possible? Well, you know, there's... Um, uh, just a wee bit more. Yeah, so everyone can see that, like how, how kind of dry that bread is, and he yes. just added in a bit more. So now you're adding in the liquid, sort of to see and to touch. Right, and I would look, keep in mind that this style is is basically uh, uh, my style that I've that I've honed over the past 30, 35, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And if you um, you can see that it it comes together. Yeah, very quickly. Very quickly. Mm -hmm. It's great, really, because there's no eggs, like, or no, no sugar, eggs. or no nothing like that. Yeah. No, just the uh, uh, just the flowers and the liquid. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now we gotta put it. Yeah, that pan is not greased. Now, sure, it's not. No. No, good. Okay. Now I'll tell you. Uh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I don't butter then grease it. Mm -hmm. This is uh, stone. This is stone. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if I had a metal, then I might have put a little. But w well, what I always have to remember mm -hmm. is that butter has milk in it, mm -hmm. and at 425, it may burn the bread. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, yeah. So, okay. all right, now we just... Press it down. So you're not shoving it down, you're just neatly kind of patting uh, it into the corners. Yes. Yeah. So that's my question there a minute ago. Like, you're sort of handling it as little, really, as possible. Yes. There's no big kneading or no... You know, Not this yeah. one. Yeah. It's very similar to those of you who love to make bread. Mm -hmm. It's uh, almost um, a kissing cousin of uh, no knead bread. Mm -hmm. um, the... Uh, get it nice and... So smooth on top. So smooth. no no cross on this one? I'm sorry? No cross on this one. No. Again, because of the yeast. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so that's pretty painless, you know, to be honest. Okay, now you'll know when it's time to put this in the oven. Right. If you measure from side, side to side mm -hmm. when it reaches the crown of the of the side of the pan. Oh it'll rise that much? Oh yes. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, the yeast. Okay. Now again this is my style. Mm -hmm. There are there are brown breads that are made with Baking soda and or baking powder. Right. But I've chosen this. Okay. And um, by the way, when you think of the healthiness of this mm -hmm. bread, mm -hmm. the number, the amount of grain in here. Yeah, yeah. Roughage and fiber and all that. The <laughs> fiber is is really intense. Yeah. But it tastes good, you know. Yes. So, yeah. So you're going to let this rest for about an hour. An hour. And the will usually, come up. my experience, mm -hmm. it rises. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the top in okay. about an hour. Okay. Um, and it's uh, cooked and uh, baked in the oven mm -hmm. at 425. Okay, 425. Okay. For about 40 minutes. Right. And I'm going to put it over here. Okay. To let oh, that one work. last thing. Mm -hmm. um, I cover this. Oh. While it's rising. While it's rising. Okay. But not with a damp cloth. That's interesting. Just tin foil will This do. is fine. Okay. Yeah. And I, the reason I'm saying this is I made pizza dough for the first time, or I used pizza dough and made sugar. Sure. <laughs> so I'm not good with yeast. And another thing to keep in mind, because we don't know what kind of oven Drew you have or what yeah. I have, mm -hmm. uh, after about 20 minutes, take a peek okay. and see that the crust on the top 
it's not, not over caramelizing. Okay. If it's over caramelizing, it becomes too brown. Put the tin foil back on. Yeah. Okay. So Harold, we've had Marion and Patricia are responding. That Hughes sisters, they took your cooking classes a few years ago, and they still use your recipes, especially corned beef and the cheddar parsnip. And then somebody, Betsy Henderson, asked, "Can we make this in a bread machine? This bread?" Um. Uh, sure. Okay. There you go. The good thing, Betsy, about this bread, it seems all of the Irish sodas and and other breads are kind of no fuss, simple, you know, quick and quick and dirty. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. Okay. Good. Very much so. So now we're going to go to um, Pat Hale, who's um, on the board of the museum and he was our expert baker this year so it's normally harold that does it so this is a very friendly bake-off competition <laughs> type thing here is it a throw down pat it's uh, like no. your dueling banjos <laughs> so pat is going to make what we would call in our competition a family style uh, soda yes. bread. Mm -hmm. everything that you're going to see in this you can buy in any grocery store in the city right. or in the regions mm -hmm. um it's basically made from um, King Arthur's flour, sugar, any, there's no brands that okay. I use. Um, we start with four cups of flour. Mm -hmm. To that, we're going to add, and I use regular tablespoons and teaspoons. I don't okay. use the measurings. Yes. We're going to add four sugars, tablespoon. And can I say, as a non-baker, like it's very interesting, neither of you used sieves or, you can come in, sieves or anything like that. You know, it's very well, simple. I don't know. Is sieves really that important anymore? What's People that? used to use sieves yeah, because remember, of like, other stuff the and clumping and, all and all other things. Yeah. Well, I was taught a long time ago that if it says sieve, you just take a uh, oh, whisk okay. and give it a good... And give it a zhuzh. Give it a good whoosh okay, yeah, and yeah. you got it. Okay. okay. So now Pat is on with baking powder. We've got powder. four sugars. Now mm -hmm. we're going to add three and a half bacon powder. Mm -hmm. We're going to add a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay. Um, and yeah. they don't cancel each other out? No. 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 There's and a science for this. Yeah. Science <laughs> yeah. and a I'm half just a here to taste salt. everyone in case you didn't realize uh, uh, this is not my forte. Salt is nice, yeah. But you did put sugar in your bread. Yes, yeah. I put four mm -hmm. tablespoons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, a couple of things. Mm -hmm. If you're diabetic right. and you don't want to use sugar, Splenda works perfectly well, huh. or no sugar. Okay, yeah, In right. fact, I've had it a couple of times with no sugar, and it's barely Because disturbable. the raisins are sweet, probably, too. The raisins you know, are yeah. sweet, mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially if you soak them in Irish whiskey. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, we know a few people that might be doing that. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. So Harold's, okay. Harold's uh, modus operandi seems to be a little bit of alcohol sneaked into all the breaks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. how true it is, doctor. <laughs> Now, once now, we get all the dry ingredients, okay. I add raisins. Right. Again, raisins just, are optional. You do not yeah. have to add them. Um, and it's kind of just a few handfuls, like you're not measuring this. Uh, it's like maybe, maybe a half. Half of that tub. Okay, yeah. So you can see I mean, in there. I already. actually love raisins, so I usually will add a little bit more. Okay. But, I mean, that's traditional not traditional but that's the reality of it and i think the most important thing pat and i might have made this up is that you put that in with the dry ingredients like you don't add the milk the buttermilk until after the raisins are in because it would be harder to speaking of i forget to oh i'll get your buttermilk for you it's mm. buttermilk so excuse me i have to move the camera <laughs> <laughs> um but am i right in saying that uh that probably is my buttermilk okay don't touch it my god yes See? that's my this is the competition now here everyone <laughs> Okay, I'm going to okay. need the other one, too. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I know that's probably making everybody car sick to have that camera move. Okay, always shake the buttermilk because it does separate sometimes. Okay. Yes, it does. But and anyway, so you put in the raisins before you do this because it would get clumpy afterwards. Like the raisins will be harder to stir throughout the flour. I do them first, but I've done them second, too. Okay. I mean, okay. It, it, I don't see a difference. Right. Um, Someone the says Irish thing. whiskey makes everything better. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and you're going to keep adding now buttermilk so. until this is like paste. Okay. So this is another kind of an eyeball type situation. You know, well, if you've got a full quart, it's usually three quarters of a quart okay. to maybe a little bit more. Okay. It depends. Just like I cook this at 350 mm -hmm. and it's for about 45 minutes to an hour. It's going to depend on your stove. Yeah. I yeah. mean, some stoves are hotter, some are not. 
And is it the middle shelf and all that, or are those days gone because of convection ovens? <laughs> um, you can tell when I learned cooking at school, like it was the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other thing to remember is this is the white bread, and yes. this is what it's actually going to look like when yeah. it's cooked. Look at how beautiful that it's is. It's the exact same recipe for my soda brown bread, mm -hmm. Which except does I use King Arthur's wheat flour okay. and no raisins. Okay. And is the King Arthur's wheat flour as grainy as that Odlum's? No. No, yeah. No, it's a very fine powdery. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think it wasn't it. Somebody was telling me that in Ireland they use a lot of more American flour because of its. I think I might have mentioned that to you. Gluten yes. levels and stuff. Yeah, we need a uh, soft uh, gluten uh, or something. A tremendous mm -hmm. amount of uh, mm -hmm. flour mid, is important. Midwestern high protein. Yeah. That they add to the. Uh, the flours. Uh, All-purpose flour in Ireland. Okay. Yeah. So. Because of the climate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I might. You know. Mm -hmm. Now, as you see, this is becoming very taste-like. It is, yeah. We could probably hang wallpaper with it, but I wouldn't recommend it. No. And actually, it's not too... Like, you could pick that up and with your fingers, you know. You could. It'd I mean, be a bit stuck to your fingers, but not terrible. I mean, mm -hmm. the sort of bread recipe itself, it doesn't need kneading or anything. Yeah. But I remember when my grandmother would make it, it would be fistfuls of flour, not yeah. measured out cups yeah. or anything. Yeah, yeah. You could just eyeball it. In fact, my mother tells me when she first learned how to do it, she made her do the flour first, and she took all the flour out and measured it so she'd know what the hell she was doing. Oh, yeah, that's And good. then did the same thing with everything else she put in it. Okay, because so your nana just eyeballed. Mm -hmm. My oh. grandmother just knew what to do, yeah, so she yeah. just did it. But you now, know what's, what's really wonderful about that? If you, if you make it so often, yeah. you, it is instinctive. Your, like your, your mm -hmm. person yeah. knows precisely picture this and a picture yeah. that. Well, and my grandmother makes the best apple tarts, as we there call them apple pie, and but it's a sieve, her sieve full of flour. Yep. <laughs> like, you know, and her sieve is not the same size as my sieve because it's battered and, you know, it's 70 mm -hmm. years old. Yeah. Okay. okay, now what we have is an iron skillet. Right. I have put some Cisco or, you know, Crisco in it and okay. floured it. Mm -hmm. We're now ready to add the soda brim. Mm -hmm. So you used a spoon the entire time for yours. Yes. Yeah, wooden spoon, lovely to see. Now you will see my final step, I do use my hands. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. You have the uh, yellow... Flour or something? Scraper that I like. I gave you to use patty to clean it. Oh, that's okay. The spatula, I didn't see it. Is it in that bowl? There it is. Sorry, we're looking for spatulas here. Okay. So here, yeah. Um, now, what I do now... I just take a little flour, mm -hmm. sprinkle it on top. Okay. And then I'm going to use my hand. This is where I use my hand. I flatten it out just to make it into the pan. Okay. Um, it will also, of course, get rid of any air bubbles. But yeah. I haven't had an air bubble in 30 years. So. Okay, good. Um, and that's it. The only thing we're going to do now is I don't know what happened to my knife. Here, is it? Oh no. Oh, well, I can do you want to borrow it. one of these? We're just going to make the uh, sign of the cross. Is it that? Would you like that, Patty? Yeah, this is fine. I don't go that deep. Right, that's important. So it's just kind of a, a cross, a half an inch in, sort of. Yep. Yeah. Now, why do we make the sign of the cross? Yes, why do we For the religious it? aspects, people would say you're blessing the bread. Mm -hmm. For more other versions, we're letting <laughs> the fairies out. Yeah. To me, you're just giving it break lines. Okay. So that when the bread rises, it'll break in the corn, and it's easier to deal with. Right. This is now ready to go right in the oven. And the temperature? Temperature is 350. Mm -hmm. It'll take anywhere from 45 to an hour. Okay. Um, depends on how hot your oven gets and how close it is to the actual temperature. Mm -hmm. Usually, I set my climber for 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. I test it. If it's done, it's done. If it's not, it needs a little bit more, another 10 minutes, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it. Okay. I mean, and it comes out pretty much like this. Yeah, beautiful. It, the brown, no, again, is the question, exact same. You didn't re-flour it after it came out. No, that's yeah, how it that's came how it out. Comes out. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to having a slice of that in about 10 minutes. So now Harold is going to do the very famous traditional plain one. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, tr- the traditional four uh, ingredients. It says so basically four ingredients. Mm-hmm. And what I'd like to do first is to. This is the oh, traditional. Yeah. So yeah, that's beautiful. And I'll give it a cut, so you can see. Uh, sorry, Jason wanted to know. I'm not sure what bread was it. Would this work with gluten-free flour? Yes. I think it would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is how it looks. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah. So to see that there's a lovely crust kind of on top yes. of the inside. It is a pretty dense bread. It is so dense. Like you know, it's not a light airy bread, but it still is beautiful. Yes. I think eggs would make it a bit lighter. But yeah, I personally uh, well, don't like eggs anyway. So because this is traditional. Yeah, we're going to. This do is eggs. what my ancestors used. Yeah. This is what they had. They didn't enough. use sugar because they couldn't afford sugar. Yeah. They kept the eggs. They ate the eggs. Yeah, yeah. No butter in it. No. Uh, it's simple. Yeah, it's a bread and, for poor and people. And basically, mm-hmm. they made it with sour milk because they yeah. had milk every single day because yeah, yeah. they had a cow if they were and a they used mm-hmm. they put it over in the corner to mm-hmm. let it ferment a little bit mm-hmm. get sour okay and and i must okay. say with sour milk it's absolutely delicious yeah that's good to know too mm-hmm. uh okay. Morris said she made soda bread this morning good woman using king arthur's gf baking mix i don't know what gf means it's the best gf flour gf yeah Gluten-free, I bet you. Uh, gluten-free, yeah. right. <laughs> there, look at that, Maura. All right, to Drawing. start off, <laughs> I'm now. using uh, Oblums. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, that I get this from Counties flour. of Ireland, mm-hmm. and it's a cream plain flour. So that means there is no rising agent, right, in there? Is oh, there's baking powder. Oh, there is already. Baking in? soda. Okay. Salt. In that flour. And? No, no, the flour. There's no rising agent in the flour. Uh, no, it's okay. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Because in Ireland you can buy self-raising flour or plain flour, and plain flour has nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the, the, the style of making this, mm-hmm. I was at a, uh, an Irish uh, festival in Boston mm-hmm. uh, probably six, seven years ago, and Darina Allen, mm-hmm. who owns the Ballymaloo Cookery School, yeah. showed me how to get it all together. And I can't, I'm looking forward to showing you. Yeah. So the first thing here is, Two cups, Mm -hmm. and the reason why I say two cups, because the buttermilk, see how thick it is? Yeah, delicious. Sometimes it takes one and a third, sometimes it takes two, it depends on the moisture in the kitchen, Mm -hmm. it depends on so many things, but at least, of the 40 years I've been making soda bread, it takes at least one and a half cups. Okay. Okay? So, here we go. Here is the uh, uh, the style or the uh, skill that she showed me. Sorry, the baking powder has already gone in, and the soda. Baking powder oh, yeah. is in. Mm-hmm. Ba- you know, uh, baking soda, I mean, mm-hmm. salt, the soda bread, yeah. and, uh, and now and this is eighteen ounces. Okay, perfect. Eighteen ounces of flour. And we will put up those recipes, you know, later. Right. Mm-hmm. Put a little hole in the middle. Okay, a little well. And notice when I do this. I put the, it's spinning the bowl. Uh, it goes on the edges. Mm-hmm. And I save at least a half a cup. Okay. Okay? Here's what really just touched my heart when I saw her do it. <laughs> this. I hope nobody's getting car sick. And if you notice, <laughs> what is happening is that it's coming together. Yeah, like little breadcrumbs. Kind like, of. Yeah, like little breadcrumbs. Okay, now when I look at it, it needs it needs more. Yeah. But he still didn't use all of it. Mm-hmm. Now I take my spatula thing. Very very special thing, mm-hmm. and I begin to bring it on itself. Okay. Very similar to what you did with the woman's what bread. I did with the brown bread. Mm-hmm. And it looks like it's going to need some more. Yeah, it is a bit dry looking. And so you can tell it needs more because it's not coming together fully. Right, it's not coming together yet. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Catherine. We're glad you're enjoying it. You know, if you look at the bowl, it's cleaning the bowl. Yeah, right. Of course, sometimes in recipes it says, be careful, Mm -hmm. don't knead it too much. Mm -hmm. You don't want to overdo it. I learned a long time ago that... You can't really overdo it, I suppose. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. almost impossible to overdo it. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, now. I'm almost positive, you know, that when we learned at school, we put it out on a floured bowl and did knead it, you know. Yes, and yeah. I'm going to show you. Yeah, a floured board, sorry. Mm -hmm. How we're going to. Sheila will swirl her bowl from now on, that's lovely. Okay. Can, so Maureen Farrell wants to know, can we say how much flour? I think it's four cups, is it, of flour? Four cups. And one and teaspoon of baking Yes, one powder. teaspoon of baking soda. soda. Mm -hmm. So four cups of flour, Maureen, one teaspoon of baking soda, about two cups of the buttermilk, and a, a tisp of soda. Now this is what I have left. Just a, yeah, so look, he didn't fully use two cups. Almost. Mm -hmm. And about a teaspoon of salt. But I will put those recipes up, Maureen, on Facebook later on and our web page. Okay. Okay, bowl is clean. Now, Jarena says, Yeah. what you want to do is you want to tidy, tidy it, it up. <laughs> I love the word tidy. Yeah. And that means... Push it together. We bring it together, mm -hmm. palm of your hand. Mm -hmm. See, it's still shaggy. Yeah. And of course... Because that probably gives it the crust, you know, those shaggy bits. And you see, little by little... Mm -hmm. So you are not actually doing a mad, you know, kneading no, the middle. No, it's not a... And, yeah, it's just a very no, gentle tidying of the edges. You're tidying it. Yeah. You're not hurting it. And yeah. you're, you're getting the edges over into the middle. Okay. Because if you don't do that, um, it'll separate the top from the bottom. Mm-hmm. I'm tidying it up. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Looks pretty good, right? It looks lovely. And we flip it over. Yeah, it looks even better now. <laughs> now, using no fingers. Right, more or less the, the flat of your hand, kind of. Mm -hmm. And down. Oh, you cook yours in a skillet too. Okay. Now, this is my my bastable. Your bastable. Very exactly. similar to. Yeah, the old days. I don't have a top. You, just, you know, they figured it out. Mm -hmm. They made an oven out well, of a. Because it was of over a, an open fire. Oh, probably. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now is yours greased and oiled? No. No. Okay. That took about 10 minutes. Yeah, maximum. Mm -hmm. And I take my knife. And to let their fairies out. Mm -hmm. Which you definitely want to do. <laughs> They're a pesky creature. Yeah. So Harold, you're going pretty deep with that. Yes. Mm. Deeper than Pat went, I think. But obviously it doesn't really matter, like a half an inch in. You're, you're not cutting through, we should say. No. Like don't cut all the way through to the bottom. Lovely, beautiful. How's it look? Looks delicious. So now that's going into what temperature? 425. 425 for a same no. thing, about 45 minutes-ish. Yes, I check it mm -hmm. after 20 minutes. Okay. And everything oh. is, I use an instant digital thermometer because the internal temperature should be somewhere between 195 okay. and 200 degrees. Okay. Because my style is that soda bread is bread. Yeah, not cake. It's not a cakey kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And already we can see as it separates mm -hmm. that the baking soda is working. Mm -hmm. It's starting to rise mm -hmm. because in order for soda bread, in order for the baking soda to work, it needs to, interact it needs to be cold because that's how it impacts and responses, okay. response to the baking soda, Okay. the, the cold buttermilk. So you're going to put yours in? Right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we'll, we'll cut and taste the other ones. Okay. And uh, we'll have a little chat. I'm going to put the camera down so I can join you. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and I'll try and keep an eye on the, the uh, codes too. So um, I think what's interesting now, they're cleaning. <laughs> if we could talk a little bit about you know your own experience of Irish food growing up and um, you know as you all know the mission of the museum of course is to pass on the heritage but the interesting thing is is that Harold in particular did not grow up really in an Irish your mom was Italian so she wasn't going to be cooking Irish stuff yes mm -hmm. um, 
very rarely cooked Italian too. <laughs> right. So yeah, let's just have a slice of bread and a chat. And if anyone has any questions, do please ask. I, I'm going to monitor this chat. There's about 51, 52 people watching live. Karen says Pat's oh. recipe and technique. <laughs> if we were taking votes, Karen is voting for Pat's. Uh, so I won't say there's a Hibernian, you know, competition there or anything. <laughs> Um, but okay, so um, have you got butter for us to have a slice of bread? We do. Good. So, actually, I'll bring the camera over so that you can see the bread a bit better when we open it. I'm just going to show you the inside of the bread first. Oh, Maureen, cheeky, do you ever put caraway seeds in any of your bread? <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, uh -huh. oh help us and save us, Mrs. O'Dears. So do you want to tell Maureen <laughs> the, the caraway seed story? <laughs> Maybe you know it already, Maureen. So like I would say, I suppose, just as the historian's point of view, technically all of those fancy ingredients became available in Ireland because of the British Empire, you know, a little bit later. So they are importing, you know, dried fruit and spices and all of these things. But, but tell your famous caraway seed story. Well, you know, um, uh, <laughs> studying the, uh, the history of Irish food, mm -hmm. what I find with the, uh, the second, third, and fourth generation mm. of, um, of Irish members of the family, um, soda bread as we know it didn't happen in Ireland until yeah. the end of the uh, 18th century when baking, baking soda, soda. Mm -hmm. which by the way, the history of it is was Native Arm American. and Hammer. Yeah. It got the, our, the Native Americans were using potash. You know, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, the, as I, mm -hmm. I, I brought along this uh, short history oh, good. Yeah. Of, of soda bread. And there's the, one on our website. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it says uh, uh, the first time mm -hmm. uh, soda bread got into a newspaper somewhere in County Down, I think. Yeah, 1836. Was uh, eight, in 1830s or 40s. Yeah, 1836. I, I 1836. <laughs> uh, where mm -hmm. it was, it was made public that yeah. soda bread was being made with baking soda. Yeah. yeah. So it it wasn't since the beginning of time. No, right. So they probably would have used yeast earlier in the breads because they well, would have had it, you know, starters from it, the the brewing and stuff maybe. Uh, that was called bran. Yeah. Uh, uh, bran. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know what they did? They, uh, they, they had unleavened they, bread. They used potash, yeah. which was lye, yeah. which was cooked, and it became um, a, a, so, a pearl ash, mm -hmm. which rose the bread. Mm -hmm. and, and pearl baking soda. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think, okay. though, we, we should be very well aware of the fact that, you know, um, 1400, 1500, mm -hmm. they didn't use wheat. They used barley. Yeah. Yeah. And um, barley became wonderfully <laughs> used as we both smile. Oh, yes. Uh, they turned it into a golden liquid and a brown right. uh, brown liquid. The ishkabaha, the and water ish of the, life. The, the water of, <laughs> exactly. Just the Gaelic word so, for whiskey. Uh, so, soda bread is, mm -hmm. is uh, Relatively the new. beginning of the 1800s. Yeah. Bread, of course, is as old as time. Oh, it's as old as time. Yeah. So let's have a slice then of whatever you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll cut a slice, Patty. You cut a slice, sure. And you go first. Okay. Well, I'm going to use the cutting okay. board here, mm -hmm. which yep. makes it easier. I have to say, I adore, like, I should have not talked because you can hear the crust when you cut. Yes. So listen to yes. this. Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's gorgeous. There is nothing better than fresh bread. I, I will say with all my uh, all my heart, this toasted in the morning, mm. which is um, wonderful, mm -hmm. is absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, I even put a little about uh, Abbey Irish uh, jelly. Oh, nice! Yeah. That I buy at the museum. <laughs> Good, lovely. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we have foodstuffs. So there's the brown and toasted bread. toasted soda bread with peanut butter and jelly is good too. Yeah. Oh, and I must say mm -hmm. that this, with the raisins in it, mm -hmm. slightly toasted, mm -hmm. smothered in butter, with a slab of Irish ham, makes the greatest sandwich in the world. Yeah. And if you ever go to Dirty Nellie's, just mm -hmm. outside of Shannon Airport, mm -hmm. you will get brown bread, yeah. smeared in butter, and layered with salmon. 
Oh, and yeah, it is God's salmon. gift to earth. Yeah. It is so good. Smoked I mean, salmon and a brown bread is delicious, yeah. I have to say, I would not put ham on a bread with raisins. So we would normally eat that in scones. Yes. I'm just going to throw that out there, everyone. All right. Um, the best, Karen is saying it's the best. And Kathy says both breads are perfect. So uh, look now, I will say, Pat's bread, I would say, is less dark than yours is going to be. Right. Inside, because of the molasses. This is, this mm -hmm. is um, the brown bread as you get in Ireland. Yeah. Is, is a ratio of about uh, 12 ounces of the apple Audlum's cider? extra oh, Audlum's, yeah. chorus. Okay. With about six ounces of the cream. cream. Mm -hmm. And then it has oat bran, mm -hmm. um, has a wheat bran. Mm -hmm. uh, molasses, maybe. And I'm sorry? Molasses, maybe. And it has yeah. the treacle or molasses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and some butter. And I will say, a lot of the times in Ireland, this type of bread, either of the brown breads, gets like seeds or nuts put in. Uh, Flaxseed. You know, yeah. I think I or, read where there seeds are I've some seen. bakeries in Ireland yeah. that are using flaxseed in Yeah, here. yeah. It, it is a good way to, you know, get the fiber in. So this is a much denser bread. Yes, yeah. very dense. Mm -hmm. So look, yeah, that's perfect. You actually sometimes can buy, uh, not to say don't bake your own, but that's delicious. Look at the little holes. You can buy a brand called McNamee's here yes. sometimes that tastes very like this. Okay. Yeah, so like the Irish stores will have it, um, you know, Celtic uh, treasures up in Saratoga okay. or the one out in East Durham or sometimes over in Troy it's called McNamee's and it, it's actually shaped like that loaf too because sometimes you know the loaves are round at home or this well to Pat's uh, suggestion yes they do more in you you butter this mm -hmm. and uh, put a slab of, uh, of Irish cured salmon yeah delicious Pat yeah it's Maureen just said that the Irish consulate in New York serves it that way, and they do. I have had it many times. <laughs> that yes. is delicious. It's absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we're going to eat and chat, I think, now. If anyone has any questions, um, ask or away. But I, I did want to talk about, you know, your own memories. Pat, your mom made bread, like, at home, did she? Every yes. week, every couple well, of days? Well, not every week. Oh, and no. We, mm -hmm. She kept it, like, once a month as a treat. Oh, it was. Okay. Um, yeah. And the strange thing was that she, she made big oval loaves. Yeah. The way it would be. Um, mm -hmm. And she always made two one with raisin, one without. Okay. She didn't like raisin. Yeah. <laughs> like yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Humorists. <laughs> the raisin, of course, everybody loved the raisin, so it would be gone and then we'd be raiding hers. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, well, but, you know, yeah. the raisins are good, I suppose, for that little dose of sweetness. You know, like an 11s as a cup of tea in the afternoon or the mid morning. Everyone to me, says it it's great delicious. with tea in the afternoon yeah. or something like that. A little, little marmalade on it, Irish marmalade, along yeah. with oh, yes. butter. Oh, yes. I mean, you know, you just can't beat it. Yeah. And you can control it because the it depends on how much marmalade you put on it. Yeah. Because marmalade can be sweet or not so sweet. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, coarse grind or lighter grind, it mm -hmm. depends on... You. Or the snails, as we used to call the peel when I yep. was a kid. <laughs> so we would recommend, we forgot to bring it ourselves, of course, we would recommend Kerrygold butter yes. goes on this, but any butter will do. Kerrygold is definitely the best. So who's going I mean, to try? Here's the brown. Yeah, here's the brown. Yeah, I want to have a little taste <laughs> of something. There's some for you. Mm -hmm. and there's some for me. I'm going to cut into this. Um... So this is the plain brown soda. Yes. Oh, so light. Mm -hmm. What I like is it comes out, and if you smell it, mm -hmm. it's just so weedy that I love the way it smells. Mm -hmm. And yes. the taste is there. Yeah, me too. God, that's delicious. And we'll use brown bread with dinner. Yeah, right. Or things of that nature. Um, well, because it is such a delicate flavor, like you, you know, there aren't spices, there isn't sugar, there isn't treacle. Right. So this is a non-tasting. You know, you could have it with spaghetti bolognese or with whatever oh, you yeah. want, a shepherd's pie. Yeah. Um. So that's an interesting thing, Harold and I have been talking about lately. Uh, Caroline said her granny made plain or treacle soda bread, and we loved it. Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, the whole idea of, of immigrants and, and food. We, you know, we we're in the hall today. As I said, when we came in, we could get the smell of the corned beef getting ready. Corned beef, of course, isn't Irish. At home, we have bacon and cabbage. Yes. But they had mm -hmm. to make do with what they could get here when they moved to the New World, you know? So a lot of the bakers, the butchers were Jewish, was one thing, so they didn't handle pig. But the other thing was it was a cheap cut of bread, uh, meat, and it was 
um, preserved. It was salted, so it was preserved, yeah. so it didn't need refrigeration as much as others would need right yeah. away. Yeah, so, so all you, the immigrants ate it. would last a few days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's an interesting part of our story, like as immigrants that, you know, we bring a tradition like bacon and cabbage, but you have to amend it a little bit because you can't get the meat that you would have at home, but you keep the tradition alive by embracing a sort of a different, you know, technique. And I always say that you eat corned beef and cabbage on St. Patrick's Day because it's a reminder you had to come here for whatever reason, mm -hmm. whether it was religious persecution with the war, the economy, whatever the reason you came here and this reminds us that mm -hmm. we're immigrants. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't be ashamed of being No, immigrant. no. Mm -hmm. we, everybody in this country, even is. the Indians, I think, came originally from Russia. So mm -hmm. we're all immigrants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Yeah. I'm third generation Irish, mm -hmm. second generation Italian. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, wow. um, my Irish, the uh, food that we ate, because I was from Boston, mm -hmm. um, we pretty much uh, very rarely talked about my dad, very rarely, when he was born in 1905, mm -hmm. just do the math or do with the, the culture. Mm -hmm. He really talked about his Irishness. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a very strong Irishman. Mm -hmm. So his his parents were but up the his bullshit. parents, yeah. Um, I've been doing the genealogy. Mm -hmm. They they all came from Mayo. Oh, uh, they all oh, left God from Mayo. Oh, God help us, Mayo. <laughs> uh, you realize that this is a Western recipe, and Mayo is part of the way. Yeah, go away. I'm just I go your mm -hmm. When uh, when I when I came to my Irishness, mm -hmm. probably I was in my mid thirties, yeah. and I discovered that I I had some of this. Someone gave me, and I said, "Hmm." Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, when my wife Jean and I opened up Coulter's Restaurant mm -hmm. in 1978 on Madison Avenue in Albany. We couldn't wait to turn our restaurant into a um, an Irish, Irish, mm -hmm. uh, with Irish food, mm -hmm. and we made the soda breads, the brown breads, and uh, a whole bunch of other. And my wife and I used to frequent. Yeah, yeah. I heard best breakfasts in Albany. Best yes. it was before yes. my time. I'm just Mary Ellen, Mary Ellis. Sorry, asked if we would show the recipe, so I will. This is basically the typed out recipe, but I'll put them up. So Harold's brown bread is a little bit more complicated than we'll say the soda bread one, which is just four ingredients. And then um, Pat will give me his because Pat adds sugar and of course the raisins to his one. Anna Mary says, thank you everyone, this is wonderful. So we are, um, they're having a look now at their things to see. Can I see that Harold? Oh, to be come on over and yeah. take come on over. Sorry, camera. everyone. Now I know this is disgusting watching the camera more. I think you should, you should see it. I should see it. So, oh my God, Pat's really came up. Look in there. Yes. I'm going to grab something. Can you see? Oh, oh look want. at that. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's nicely. So, like, that's going to take another thirty minutes, though. Yeah. It yeah. hasn't coloured at all. And then here's Harold's. He's Harold Mind now. You're back. Mm hmm. Don't even take it out. See the difference. Yeah. Uh, so it's still very pale, but it is rising. It is, oh yeah, Like it's, the moon, oh, yep. that's a carry song. <laughs> so um, can we give them a little it's talk then? Rising too. It's uh, very slow right now, but then all of a sudden, mm. hey, it's bigger. it goes. So um, I'm just going to put that down so that it's steady and hopefully you can see the two boys' heads. You can. <laughs> um, uh, if you want to taste... Um, I do, I want to taste. you want to taste the... Uh, the plain white. The I plain white. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to cut it smaller? Uh, no, I probably eat the whole thing. Once. Okay. I'll butter it for myself. So um, let's talk a little bit more about the soda bread competition. Both of you have been involved for yes. years in that. So we've been, was it, this year would have been our ninth, I think? Ninth? Yeah. And believe it or not, two years ago, it was on the 10th of March. Oh. And it was on the 10th of March, uh, yeah, two years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think it would have been just the 7th or 8th last year, Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Delicious. Mm -hmm. That's. <laughs> Sorry, I can't open. Is it frosty? Similar to what you you had at home. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very mm -hmm. similar. Patty, you want a piece? Yes, I'm gonna have a piece. So I'll come back to monitor the comments, and because I can't talk and eat. Um, what part of Boston are you from, Harold? Says Betsy Henderson. Uh, I'm from a town uh, about 30 miles south of Boston called Mansfield, Massachusetts. Mm. It's in the shadow of 
Foxborough Stadium, the home of the Boston Patriots. Oh, wow. I said Boston. <laughs> I didn't say New England because they started in Boston. Oh, is that the football team? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. All yes. I know is deflate gate and your man was cheating. I think that was that team. I better move on because I know sports are contentious. This is, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. The brown bag? Mm. Yeah. So they are very different. It's amazing how, you know, a tiny tweak of the ingredients, uh, you know, does change the context, uh, the, the texture, I mean, which is beautiful. Mm. And I suppose if you baked it for a teensy bit less, it would be a bit more fluffy, do you think? Mm. You gotta be careful less, because you are testing to make sure it's fully cooked. Okay. Because if you pull it out, you can get still pasting in the mm -hmm. middle. Mm -hmm. Harry so Harry uses uses that, I use the knife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a knife should come out dry or a skewer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to comment, nobody has asked, but um, we mm. normally do wear masks, but we did not I'm today. To, this oh. is mine. Just so that you could understand them when they're talking on camera. It's a bit difficult, and they both had their jabs. We're very happy. Would you Maybe like once, or somebody wants Harold's spatula. <laughs> oh, Judy. Judy wants Harold's spatula. Yeah, that's a handy thing, Harold. What's that? Your little spatula. Like in the hand, you know, it, it looks like a, a, oh, my a wallpaper paste maker thing. Uh, so important in cleaning the bowl. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Tom says, thank you. We miss seeing you all in person. Can't wait to get bread in the oven. I know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was talking about, our, our competition. So we started the competition nine or ten years ago for the, um, to, well, in honor of one of our board members at the time, Maureen McCarthy mm -hmm. was on the board and she was from herself. Was she from Tralee? She was. Chris's mom was from Tralee, County Kerry. It's all about Kerry, everyone. I'm from the Stole. <laughs> so, you know, these two boys are from, you know, the West Coast, a little bit north of me. It is all about uh, Kerry, really. What's this? Now, Your this is the brown bread. bread. Okay, yeah. Can I make with Magnus? I'm just going to put off some of the butter. It's made with Magnus hard cider. Oh yeah, good Magnus hard cider. Okay. The one I have over here is just made with apple cider. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you can taste that by the way. Mm -hmm. So I would say, I don't ever remember having you know, cider in bread. Definitely treacle, but uh, uh, you know, any way you can get alcohol in is a good thing, right? <laughs> Especially this one. Thank you from Rochester, you're welcome Jason. So the competition we have been running it. We do two categories: the traditional soda bread, which can be brown or white, but it's only those four ingredients, or then what we were calling family recipe, because everyone does have, you know, mom puts in caraway seeds or she puts in. We've had really weird things like cheeses and stuff. You know, people get very creative in the family category, so we we're open to that. Maureen knows McCarthy's pub in Pernuk. Yeah, me too. I'm from six miles away from there. Not even six miles. I'm from the stove. Patricia, thank you from Long Island. Great. Um, oh, that's, it's a lovely pub. Maureen knows McCarthy's pub <laughs> in Penug, yeah. Uh, my sister is married into Penug, as we say, <laughs> but they're living in California now. So um, we're hoping to get back to the competition next year. We just couldn't hold it this year because, of course, with COVID, yeah. you know, we're on crowd control. 25 people can come in at the museum at one time, you know, and it was just awkward, I think, in terms of health and safety. But hopefully next year we'll get back. So this year we wanted to give you a kind of a master class dueling banjos thing so there's no excuse next year everyone knows how to bake either a version of the family recipe or plain soda bread you know not like i do too but <laughs> maureen that's yes well i'm going to tell you having judged the competition a couple of years yeah it is amazing the traditional recipes yeah and the difference mm -hmm. in the bread mm -hmm. even though the recipe is a basic four ingredients mm -hmm. People use so many different versions of it. They use this much baking powder or this yeah. much not powder soda, or they use this much buttermilk or whatever. So I mean, even the breads that are using the same basics mm -hmm. are entirely different. Mm -hmm. And maybe, like maybe the flour, you know, brands changes. The and Irish flour is a little different from yeah. the American flour, so it is going to cause yeah. slight differences in the flavor. And probably cooking time, like, and I would say a skillet, you know, an iron, a cast iron skillet is going to lend a flavor in a way that, you know, baking it on a tray might not. So it is, it's very interesting, yeah. Um, so hopefully we will get back to that next year. And um, 
Oh my god, you should see the judging. I don't know if we've ever shown people the judging sheet. There's about 85 <laughs> categories, like chewiness and dent, oh, everything. It, it's a professional job, this it's judging. It's a very professional <laughs> judging. Yeah, oh, the yeah, yeah. We have or something of real, not that we're not, or some yeah. of us aren't, but you know, we want it to is something that actually you should be looking use. at. Yeah. Some of the different textures and yeah. a taste and flavor and how There's much There's kind of categories like on the thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I also it was last a wonderful competition. It, was, it is, it is. Yeah. Well, and we often say, I know I'm not in the shot, but I, I'm chewing away here and drinking my tea. It, you know, it's such a communal aspect of our culture, you know, of every culture. You know, Irish people are not the only ones who get together. But to eat together is prayerful, you know, in a way, like to, to get together and to have even just a taste of bread, you know, and so certainly at the museum we miss that, you know, that we don't, we haven't really had many visitors, we're doing everything online. Um, so we, we look forward to that, but particularly I think when you think of the Irish that came in the 19th century, you know, they came hungry, they didn't have plenty at home, then they come to this country and it was tough, you know, the, they say that the average um, famine era immigrant refugee really only survived for seven years. Yes. So, you know, it's not like they come here and life suddenly becomes all roses and cherries, you know, it, it was still difficult, but those that were able to hang on, you know, hung on. and so. You know, Pat's mom, was she an immigrant or born My here? My mother was American born. The American but born. But her parents were Irish born. Yeah. yeah. My father is Irish born. Mm -hmm. So Your I always said American. that he's Irish American and I'm American Irish. Yeah, yeah. But it's interesting, you know, so like that's a different even experience. You know, he's here like myself, you know, kind of, you're, you're kind of comparing things. Home is home. You know, it, it is a slightly different, I think, experience. And, and yet what we have in common sort of is the food or at least the getting together to eat and to drink together. So this week, especially of course, is uh, this whole month, Irish American Heritage Month, we're very excited and very busy. I'm delighted we were able to do this today. Um, on Friday, we have a concert live on Facebook with Don Kelly, a local Albany man. Um, so that it's a free concert on Facebook Live. And then on Saturday is the virtual parade, which will be streamed on Facebook. We took part in that, but the parade committee have been hard at work on that for months. And Sunday, we have a concert live from the museum at 2 p.m. with them. Uh, uh, you're welcome, Anna, Marie. Anna Mary. We have uh, Shanna Key from Galway. It's $10, um, you know, because he is the professional uh, presenter. That's Sunday at 2. And then at 4, I'm taking part in a panel with um, Pro Musica. And they, you know, it's a show, I think it's on WMHT. And then. That is next week we have loads of talks so just keep an eye on our facebook page and our uh, website <laughs> karen excellent event thank you you're welcome so anything to add to that men um i it, everything is so delicious i yeah. mean um i the beauty of the diversity uh, uh, uh you know i was i'm reminded one more time that um uh, the culinary uh, culinary life mm -hmm. of Irish uh, people today, mm -hmm. um, the culinary life of uh, people. Uh, my last time I was in Ireland was 2007. Oh. I visited a number of culinary schools. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time I went was in the mid-80s. Um, traditional cooking was still pretty good. Yeah. But if you look at that cookbook oh, yeah. I have right now, um, we're, we're balancing the camera on it, but I'm going the, to show you. The, uh, the cooking of Ireland is slowly, mm -hmm. uh, it's becoming more European. Yeah, but there's the a lot of beauty fusion of stuff going on. Yeah. Is that it's an island surrounded by ocean. Yeah. The, just the seafood. Yeah. And of course the, the meat, the lamb. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's it's amazing. Yeah. Well, I think what Irish people get a bad. What the chefs are doing in Ireland right yeah, now. Yeah, and we have a bad reputation, you know, from um, people think we boil everything to death, you know, or yeah. and of course we do like a lot of one pot dinners. We have stews and chowders and shepherd's pies, but we were sort of doing farm to table, you know, mm -hmm. before it was a thing because a lot of things in Ireland are locally sourced. They are organic, you know, and, and so I think we've been. Yeah, Caroline just said the same I, thing. I can remember having a conversation with Dorina Allen probably in 1983 or 84. Mm -hmm. One of my cooks in the restaurant went to Ireland and, and was accepted as a student in her school. Mm -hmm. And she was, I can remember her words, farm to table. 
Yeah. I think Darina Allen and her Bella Malo Cookery School kind of pioneered this. They pioneered yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. Uh, look, what, look where we are today. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, certainly I will say is growing up in Ireland, I always thought, you know, the food ingredients were the meat is right there. You oh, yes. know what farmer supplies the supermarket with the chops, you know. My sister is married into the Galvins in Fanuc. We drank milk right from the cow, you know, on their table. And, and so it is very, I think, clean and fresh. And, and it can sometimes be plain or, you know, mildly seasoned, but it's delicious, nutritious food, you know. So I, I am looking forward to everybody visiting Ireland. And I think our chowder is to die for. <laughs> what everyone yes, thinks, yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, I always find that I was an Irish step dancer. Mm. Irish step dancing was suppressed by so many, for so many years because of the occupation and everything mm -hmm. else so that it stayed. You preserved what you knew and yeah. didn't advance. I think it's the same in the cooking. That's if we look back in our history, we, were sick, we didn't have that much mm -hmm. to begin with. Mm -hmm. The economy was not built for the common Irish person, it was mm -hmm. built for the elite. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we were sort of dealing with the issues and the foods that we dealt with, that our mothers dealt with, that our fathers dealt mm -hmm. with, that everybody dealt mm -hmm. with. So we preserved those. Yes. But now that we're no longer, we're in an economy that's building and growing and has yeah. been, we're allowing the true Irish cooking spirit, as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned, to come out. Mm -hmm. The That's same as we did with the dance, with Lord of the Dance. Yeah. It came out that you can hold hands dancing and you don't have to be this stiff. We were yeah. stiff for a reason. Yeah. So no one know we were dancing. You're right. You know, so all this has been suppressed for so long that we're now allowed to mm -hmm. expand mm -hmm. our knowledge, our, our, our things that we want to experiment with, mm -hmm. and it's growing. That's well, actually I, a great I'm, way of looking at us. I this was uh, this people. morning. Uh, I was uh, on the internet mm -hmm. and I uh, accessed uh, restaurants in Claire Morris oh, in yeah. County Mayo and mm -hmm. um, a restaurant pub, bistro pub came up and I think it was called The Ark mm -hmm. and the dinner menu uh, proposed a uh, sautéed chicken breast mm -hmm. that was stuffed with uh, Blood sausage. Oh, nice, yeah. A apple. wee bit of cabbage. Mm -hmm. No, they can keep the cabbage. Right? <laughs> the blood sausage. A, a slice of apple. Yeah, apple and black pudding is so delicious. And mm -hmm. uh, 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 sewn together or put mm -hmm. together, and it was sauced with an apple cider reduction kind of reduction yeah. sauce. Yeah. And yeah. That you wouldn't see probably 30 years ago. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's my, to my, your point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My cousin is a chef in Dingle, and his wife is French, I think, and, like, he makes a, a chowder, which normally is very creamy, you know, based in our... And his is with a consomme, almost. But delicious. Oh. He makes one of the best consomme. shrimp curries I've ever had. So there's a little Thai flavor through his food, and there's French, you know, influence in his food. And, and again, it's all clean. It's beautiful. I have a recipe I use for pork chops which is pork chops cooked in heavy cream and sliced apples. Delicious, oh. yeah. And it's like, it comes out yeah. so tender. So it's got that sweet apple flavor to yeah. it and the heavy cream, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's not something you want to eat every day of the week because <laughs> it'll kill you. Yeah, uh, yeah, the arteries might, yeah. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a great little recipe. Mm -hmm. So we still have lots of people watching. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Because uh, I, you know, I don't know about you all, but I certainly have a little bit of cabin fever, so I'm delighted to be online with everyone here. Um, and we still have loads of bread to eat. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions or comments? You can type it in the... I don't... I was going to say chat. I don't know how you would type it. <laughs> so Willie says his granddaughter loves her Irish step dancing class. Yeah, it's, it's so important. And, you know, that definitely is the mission of the museum. I don't know. You can't really read it. We brought up our little sign. But, you know, we, that is what we do with the museum is, is tell the story of the contributions of Irish people in America and encourage all Americans of whatever ethnicity to look at your background. And particularly in America, like Irish intermarried with Polish and African American and Italian and German. So, you know, Anne and Mary says, what brand of buttermilk is that, please? This I, is, is it Kate's. Kate's. Yeah. Um, I'm making stores. Hannaford's be a yeah. price chopper. They all sell it. Yeah. And the other kind that's always beside it is the low fat. Okay. And either one you can use, I find no difference whatsoever in yeah. the flavor. Yeah. 
And actually, we were talking a little bit earlier on. You typically you could use sour milk if you had left your milk. Sour with milk is yeah. It 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 imparts a flavor that is that is absolutely delicious. Yeah. If, or you could use you could add lemon yes, to fresh can. milk and, and make your own you know yes. sour. I'm wondering, do these men make the Christmas cakes and puddings? Oh, Mary Alice Stowling, that's a good question because that's a like that's and a day. The question work. is what? Do you make the Christmas a, a Christmas cake or a, a pudding? Oh yes. But can I? Am I right? So I come from a house that does not bake. I, I hate to admit that. <laughs> but the Christmas cake, like you start making that in October or something, don't you? Because you've got to let the fruit. Well, you can. Yeah. You can. Everyone in Ireland that I know like makes Christmas cake way before Christmas. Yes, through, mm -hmm. uh, if it's uh, laced with with uh, 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 Irish whiskey. Yeah. Oh, it has to have either whiskey or brandy. I or think brandy, some people put. Um, yeah. And the plum pudding, yes. we would have. What alcohol is in that? I know we put brandy on top, you know, to light it. The pudding, maybe you could make the pudding quite fresh and then you just steam it on the day. You can. But Christmas cake is a big, long thing, I know that. Um, yeah, how many loaves? Oh, bar 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 yeah, yeah, for Halloween. For Halloween. How well, I make it all year round. I like round. that all year round. Yeah, yeah I do round too. Like all year round, yeah. Maureen says, how many loaves will each of you make for St. Patrick's Day? Oof. Um, <laughs> this is my eighth. Yeah. So far, and I've got a few more to make. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. There'll be plenty of bread. <laughs> and then Betsy wants to know, good question, Betsy. Currants or raisins? I, I prefer currants. You do? And yeah. I prefer raisins. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, I prefer neither. <laughs> and I soak, soak them overnight. Okay, in alcohol? And Irish, Jameson's Irish whiskey. Okay. Jeez, that's an expensive bread, Harold. <laughs> Marin is delighted to see the show. She'll make Harold soda bread next week with the RH oats. It's perfect for kids because it really is an easy four ingredients you know yeah uh, yeah so mary brady wants to know do you make irish brack that's the barn brack that yes you're well, just we, we, so that. that's a little bit of a different recipe isn't it Pat? um drier bread i think barn brack seems to me to be dry i'm trying to remember my recipe barn brack for me uh, uh, using a good strong irish tea that's what i use too yes tea. irish tea, tea. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, you uh, soak the raisins or the fruit in yeah. tea because I've seen Overnight. cherries in that Overnight. too, yeah. yeah, okay. And then just flour and salt and... Well, it, it, whatever the actual ingredients are. I yeah. mine came out of an Irish cookbook that I used, yeah. but... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. it's, you know, basic flour. Uh, yeah. It comes out I as a brown loaf, similar to the brown bread here, yeah. but... And similar but, to your raisin. Uh, yeah, yeah. The yeah, raisins. And you are supposed to, Oh my God, I, can I tell everyone, if we had smell o vision you would love it. You can smell the bread now cooking, you know, so it has lent this kitchen yes. uh, something. Yes. But the, the barn brack, you, in Ireland, we put in, you know, a, a little piece of wood, a sixpence or, you know, a coin. You put in toys for yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, it's fortune telling. I'm going to yeah. check the oven. Okay, he's going to check the oven. And um, let me think what else I was going to say. Yeah, so oh, the, good. oh yeah, his is starting to color up. Let's just have a look at Pat's. Oh, Pat, yours rolls beautifully, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it still isn't cooked, we can tell by the color. We might be coming up on 40 minutes for you, but it's still, is that knife yeah. a bit wet? So it's got just a little moisture left that I need to leave it in for maybe another 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh, and Celia Leonard gave the grandkids a tutorial of the late nan nanny Celia Leonard's recipe. Yeah, and that's what's so beautiful, like, is that families do pass down the technique or the, the recipe, because sometimes it is technique that's different as opposed to the recipe, you know. Um, and Harold's other bread is rising. So, guys, I think if you have no other questions, we can probably um, leave it there and we'll wait for everything to, to bake. It, it's hot in the kitchen, I'm just going to say that. And this is going to be available at our website. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it'll be available on the Facebook page. I don't know how to transfer it to the website, no. but it saves itself on the Facebook page, so you can get it there. Oh, on Facebook. That's yeah, I mean. and I might be able to link it to our YouTube page for anyone that doesn't have Facebook, but, you know, don't hold out this week for anything like that to happen because we're very busy. <laughs> um, and don't forget, all of you who want to do a 5 or 10k walk or run, there still is time to register for that with Zippy Reg or on our website. It's a fundraiser for the museum. It's our fourth annual sweater run. Uh, we'll put all the recipes up. Have a look at all that bread. I don't know how we're going to finish if they, that. If anybody who uh, was present to our uh, demonstration today, mm. if they would like to contact either Pat or myself, they can uh, have a, a get in touch with the museum and you. Yeah. And we'd be more than happy to share yeah. 
Well, Again, well, I, I would try not to do that this week <laughs> when we're so busy. And just so you know, soda bread is freezable. Yes, yes, I have you a lot of those. Well, wrap it well and freeze it, yeah. and it's good. Next month. Yeah, and we good will. Point. So, like, don't contact us for the recipe because I will put that up on Facebook and I will put it on our website. Um, so, like, you know, don't bother contacting me for that because it will be available to you. But um, you all know, like, I we have about ten or twelve speaking engagements, and by we I mean me <laughs> this week and next week every day. So, um, well, you know, I won't really be in the museum. I'll be in and out, or I'll be on Zoom. So we are open, but I won't be there. And um, we're delighted to have had you all on today. I think this is so wonderful that we can reach each other through this technology, even though we're all far apart. And I did say, you know, we normally mask. We just didn't today because we wanted you all to be able to hear them. And the two men have had their shots. They're yep. perfect specimens of health. <laughs> so. oh, did you know you were perfect? I did indeed. <laughs> And uh, so happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone, or Banna Thilo Fela Podrig, as we say in Gaelic. Um, I better come around so you can see me. Don't move. Don't <laughs> move. Squishing. So thank you very much, everyone. We're delighted. And uh, I loved the bread. I'm going to taste more because I didn't have the one with the raisins yet. But thank you all very much. And happy St. Patrick's Day. Please do make the bread and let us know how it goes. Yes. And uh, enjoy eating with your family in health and safety uh, until next year when we can do so at the museum again. Thank you very much. Yes. Take care. Slauncher. Slauncher. Good health. Exactly. Thank you.